So have you been working for Matheson long? Or are you a psychologist too, or a magician? Actually, I'm a physicist. So why do you do this? Do what? Investigate fake paranormal stuff. I'm Barbara Chai with The Wall Street Journal, and we're joined today by actor Killian Murphy, who is in a new film called Red Lights, directed by Rodrigo Cortez, starring Robert De Niro, Sigourney Weaver, Elizabeth Olsen, and Toby Jones. Thanks for joining us today, Killian. Thank you. <laughs> so you have this new film, Red Lights, which in which you play a paranormal debunker mm -hmm. who, with Sigourney Weaver's character, goes out and tries to discredit fake psychics and healers. Is that correct? That's it, yeah. We're, um, she's my boss, and I'm, I guess, like her assistant, and mm -hmm. that's our job to kind of expose these guys as frauds or charlatans or whatever you choose. So how did you prepare f to play this role? I read somewhere that you went to Vegas and saw some shows or hung out with a ma magician. Yeah, I mean, I suppose in the movie, um, you know, uh, Robert De Niro's character is kind of like a, an amalgam of all of that. He's like a, he's kind of part of a Copperfield, you know, part like uh, Chris Angel, mm -hmm. but he's also like a sort of a televangelist. He's kind of like a faith healer. He's like a politician. So I wanted to try and get as broad a spectrum of experience as I could. So I went to see those guys for the showbiz element in Vegas. Right. Yeah. Well, what did you observe in the audience? I mean, do people really believe this stuff? And I think that aspect, of, it was amazing. I mean, David Copperfield is just, you know, he's a master at this stuff, and it was fantastic. I loved it. But it's pure fun, you know. Mm -hmm. I think the shadier aspect of it is, you know, when they start saying that they can cure people or start saying they can talk to your dead relatives, that's when it gets a bit shady, I think. In the film, uh, your character, Tom Buckley, becomes more and more unhinged by the end. And in a sense, your character is less, is not really reliable mm -hmm. toward the end. Is that true? Yeah, I think it's kind of like a movie about duality, really. And it's kind of like a movie of two halves as well. And I always like in characters contradiction, because I think as human beings, we are like walking contradictions. And I think this character is beautifully observed in that way, because he is a contradiction. So the film premiered at Sundance, and there were lots of high expectations. It had a marquee spot, but afterwards it received some very mixed reviews, and some critics um, sort of talked about the plot twists and the ending. Um, as an act, as the actor who carries this film more than any of the others, even though it's a stellar cast, how did you respond to that? I think uh, um, I'm always sort of uh, happy when a film exercises people and people have strong responses to it and this film it really has people talking and the way I always judge a movie is when I go to see it if like two days later I'm still talking to my friends about it or I'm still thinking about it or it leaves some kind of residue so you know uh, people had strong responses you know and I like that. There's this enormous cast I mean you've worked with Robert De Niro, Sigourney Weaver but right now it seems you're promoting the film mostly alone or with the director. Mm -hmm. um, it's not like Inception where the entire star-studded cast yeah. is out in full force. Is that a little bit strange to you? Well, we don't really have the budget that Inception. This is a, a you know, this is an independent film. We shot it in Barcelona, you know, for not that much money. Um, so I guess, you know, you got to work with the resources you have. An actor once told me that it's always an unexpected joy when a film really connects with an audience and it's deemed a success because the same energy goes into making a bad film as does a good film. Mm -hmm. um, so I was just curious from your perspective, what is that experience like where you're literally the face of this film and yet you don't have the ultimate control over how it turns out? Yeah, well, you know, that's the kind of, that's the mm -hmm. thing about being an actor. You, you do your work and you hope you do it as best you can and you turn up and you give everything possible, but then you sort of hand it over to the director and to the editor and they build it from the raw materials that you've given them, so you sort of have to, you know, um, you know, pass over the control to those guys, mm -hmm. um, and and you know, you're on to the next thing, and then you see it a year later. So it's a, it's a strange process for the actor. Yeah, yeah. Was this film what you envisioned when you first read the script? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I love it, and when I saw it, it, it seemed to me like this looks like it could have been shot in like 1973. You know, mm -hmm. that's what I like about it, and that's his aesthetic, and that's what the films that he's into, the director, the writer director. So we're just going to play casting director for a second, based on the internet and lots okay. of fans who speculate that you might actually make a perfect Christian Grey in the film adaptation of this erotic fictional book called Fifty Shades of Grey. Right. It's a 27-year-old billionaire who's into bondage and domination, <laughs> okay. who's alternately sweet but also creepy. How do you feel about that? Would you be interested? 
I don't know. <laughs> you should maybe get, you know, you're a good agent. <laughs> I, uh, I haven't read the book. I know everyone's talking about it. Um, but, you know, the thing is, I, it's kind of random how you get jobs. You know, you just read the scripts. I have no strategy, no plan. And uh, you just read the script, and then if you like it, you like it. So if there is a script, there is a director, great, I'll read it, but you can't speculate. You know? mm. Another uh, role that many are saying you would be perfect for is in the television show, HBO show Game of Thrones, hugely popular. In the next season, the bastard son of Roose Bolton, Ramsay Bolton, uh, needs to be cast. And George R. R. Martin describes him as someone with a fleshy appearance, with large, wormy lips and long hair and pale eyes. And so many people say that you would be perfect as a Ramsay Snow. Oh, I don't know <laughs> if that's a compliment or not. <laughs> I'm not quite sure. <laughs> and the final question, which you must have gotten a million times, will you be in The Dark Knight Rises? Come on. <laughs> it's going to be out in like a few weeks. It'll be amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us, Killian. Thank you. The film is Red Lights. It opens July 13th. Killian Murphy. Thank you so much for joining us.